All right, let's work a uh, final problem from chapter four where we're going to compare um, what we get when we calculate pressure based on one, the ideal gas equation, and two, using the steam tables. For steam at 400 degrees Celsius, the specific volume of 0 0.02. So let's go ahead and do that. The ideal gas equation we know is PV equals to MRT. We're interested in solving for pressure, so pressure is equal to MRT over V. Well, we have the specific volume of this mixture, so we can simply write this as RT over V over M. Now the volume per unit mass is going to give us the specific volume, which we have. So we have that value there. All right. Now, next question is, what value do we use to calculate R? So let's do that over here. Oops. So R for water or steam is going to be the universal gas constant divided by the molecular weight of water. Be sure to watch the previous lecture if you don't know uh, what I'm talking about here. So molecular weight of water is going to be knowing that H2 has a molecular weight of 2 kilograms per kilomole and O has a molecular weight of 16 kilograms per kilomole we can say that the molecular weight of water is 18 kilograms per kilomole. I just added them together. It's, it's H2O, right? So let's calculate what the ideal gas constant of steam would be. Universal gas constant is always the same. 8314 joules per kilomole degrees Kelvin. Molecular weight is 18. Okay, and we'll use that in our equation here. So we'll show that pressure is equal to 8314 divided by 18 times temperature, which is 400 plus 273 divided by the specific volume, which is 0 0.02. So our pressure in this case is 15,542 kilopascals. So that's our final answer using the ideal gas equation. Now we're not totally sure yet if this is uh, superheated vapor or saturated vapor. The reason I say that is you say, well, it's 400 degrees Celsius. It's got to be a superheated vapor. But we're operating, according to this equation, at a very high pressure. So we may actually be and possibly be in a saturated saturated state. We simply don't know uh, yet. Well, we can check before we use the steam tables. So we use the appropriate ones. Okay. So let's go ahead and check our values using the steam tables. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the saturated water tables. We can look at the temperature table, and you guys will see that at using the temperature table, here I'm looking at table A4. The tables even go up to 400 degrees Celsius, even when we have an extremely high pressure, higher than even what we're calculating using the ideal gas law. We can also confirm that with this table over here. We can say, oh, what if we increase the pressure? Oh, well, saturation temperature would be at 373. We're operating at 400. We're not at this pressure. I mean, we're not close to that. But um, we are at a high pressure, and we just confirmed that we're, in fact, at a superheated vapor. So let's lose the superheated water tables. Uh, one, we're looking at it. our pressure is... Uh, our pressure is... Well, that's what we're trying to find. <laughs> and
And what we do know is we know that the temperature is 400 degrees Celsius, and we also know that our specific volume is 0 0.02 meters cubed per kilogram. All right. So which one? At 400 degrees Celsius, when at what pressure is a specific volume 0 0.02? So if we look at this pressure, nope, that's not matching up with our value. This is not matching up with our value. Decreasing as we increase the pressure, so at 400. So we keep increasing the pressure at 400 to try to match the specific volume of 0 0.02. And we keep increasing it. Let's see where they intersect. Um, let's see. So it looks like to me that at a temperature of 400 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 12.5 megapascals. So we can say that a pressure of 12,500 kilopascals, we uh, match the value of 0 0.02 for the specific volume, or it's pretty close. Um, we can do some interpolation, but this is about as close as we're going to get without having to do that extra work. Okay, so we can say that using the steam tables, we we're able to show that the pressure is um, 12,500, and that's what we would expect to see if we actually um, took a measurement or something in this system. Now the ideal gas equation you can see is quite a bit off in this case and that's even with assuming that this is a superheated vapor. So uh, use caution, okay? I mean we're this is a vapor form, uh, it's a gaseous form and um, using the ideal gas equation certainly has good application but under cer certain circumstances you can expect some errors to occur if you apply the ideal gas equation to certain uh, condition, uh, for example, here we have a certain amount of error associated with this measurement or with this calculation. So I hope that helped you guys. Uh, we're going to move on now to Chapter 5. I'll con continue to give some lectures, work some problems, and uh, we'll continue on talking about thermodynamics.